The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knobsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. Welcome in to the PA Power Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Upson. Joined, as always, by Eric Knopsner. But, Eric, we're here at Powerade. We're out at a booth here in, in Cannon Mac High School, and we're uh, we're in the thick of it right now. We are. We're representing PA Power here in Cannonsburg. Uh, great tournament so far, and uh, some awesome finals still to come. Yeah, there's a ton of, of good matchups to, to keep an eye on, uh, but our semifinals were just incredible. Uh, I always say this every year that the quarterfinals are, are probably my favorite round, but the semifinals are starting to make a, a strong case for their uh, rank in what round's the best at Powerade because there was just some hammer matchups between some of the state's top guys and some of the nation's top guys, and there were some upsets. Yeah, definitely some results that you look at and say, wow, did not see that coming. And we're going to walk through every weight. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened in the semifinals, what we're looking forward to the finals, and we may even give some predictions about what, what we expect to happen. But expect the unexpected here at, in Cannon Mac. It's always it's a great atmosphere, Eric. And yeah, I, yeah, we've seen state champs go down already today, uh, you know, and possibly uh, more to come. Who knows? It, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a, a, a case where you never know what's going to happen here, uh, and and we're gonna. I'm I'm can't wait to to have this podcast. I was sitting on the mat, <laughs> sitting there thinking about all the good matchups there is, and I was man, we got to get out there and start talking about these matchups. Uh, we look at 106, and this was a an interesting wait because you had some guys coming down who were at 113 last year, um, but there's a, a new name here, and that's. Alejandro Herrera Rondon, or as I like to call him, AHR. I think that's a little bit easier to say. Probably a wise move, considering your uh, history of pronouncing names. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's <laughs> uh, we're going to go that route already. We're we're not even one weight in, and you're already going there, Eric. Okay, that's great. So Curtis Phipps wrestled him uh, from Norwin. Curtis Phipps is a, a sophomore returning state place winner, and um, he came in ranked number one in the state. And AHR, he he definitely had some some good wins under his belt. He wrestled at the King of Mountain. Um, did lose a Carter Dybert from Franklin Regional, but he comes uh, comes into the the Powerade semifinals. He does lose to Curtis Phipps four nothing. Were you able to watch that match at all? I, I did see some of it, uh, and I got to see AHR a little bit uh, this weekend, and was really impressed by him. Uh, uh, you know, Phipps, uh, a known commodity, uh, very good, and and proved that here. But uh, I, he was tested by AHR. And Phipps is going to have his hands full in the finals. Will Guida from St. Paul's uh, in Maryland. My gosh, he he just took over the match against Kyle Burkholder in the other semifinal match, beat him 9-2. It's just a hammer on top. I was just watching him, um, and, and I was impressed with the way he wrestled. Yeah, he's definitely looked good. Uh, he beat uh, Trent Valvchek in the uh, in the quarterfinals from Burrow and, and looked good there as well. So uh, definitely a, a tough matchup for Phipps in the finals. And that is your number one and number two seed. Curtis Phipps is your top seed. Uh, and Will Guida is the second seed, so looks like the seeding committee got that one correct. Moving up to 113 pounds, and this is a weight that we we have a, a vacancy with Kirk McHenry from St. Paul's not being here, um, and Bo Bayless from Reynolds, a state champion last year at 106 pounds. He moves up to the top seed, and he's in the finals. Yeah, Bayless, uh, as you said, uh, looks pretty good. Uh, had a, a difficult match there uh, in the in the semifinals with Christian Fisher of Mifflin County. Uh, got an early takedown and then made that stand up in a 2-0 win. Yeah, and that was he I mean he wrote him out and he was it was an interesting match from uh, it was kind of I'm not saying boring from after sort the, of anticlimactic. It was anticlimactic, right, after the first period and um you know that that happens especially at Powerade, but Bayless defeats Christian Fisher um 2 nothing. He was a uh, Fisher was a returning state medalist. Um and and Bayless, I mean this is really uh, it's uh, I thought wide open 113 became wide open once McHenry, McHenry uh, was not here. Well, and there's a new name to, to know uh, on the national scene here uh, with an eighth grader. Uh, I'm guessing probably the first ever eighth grader to make the Powerade finals. I didn't even realize eighth graders could wrestle in the Powerade. Uh, but I guess we got clarification on it today. I was talking to Joe Toscano from uh, the Washington Observer Reporter, and he said that, yes, uh, as long as the, the state allows it and the state is in good standing. So Lake Highland prep fresh, or uh, eighth grader Nick Bazakis is in the finals and has looked 
really, really good. One more time in the name. Uh, Nick Bazakis. Okay, all right. I don't know that. I'm I mean, you're guessing. so good at pronunciating, you know, words and all that. Yeah, but fun you would add like a J in there somewhere. Okay, that's that's cool. Well, <laughs> he 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 beat Ryan Sullivan, and I got to see a little bit of that. That was a 16-11 match. That was a wild match. It, it was back honestly, and forth. it didn't seem that close though. I mean, it was it was wide open for a while in favor of Bazakis, and I think Sullivan closed it up a little bit at the end there. All right. Well, who who do you take? Uh, Bazakis, the the eighth grader, and or Bayless, the 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 junior. Uh, I'm gonna lean towards Bayless. You're gonna lean towards Bayless. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go Bazakis. Moving up to 120 pounds, Louis Newell from Seneca Valley. He b- picks up a big win over a fellow WPIL wrestler, uh, Darren Miller. He won five two, and that was that was a pretty tight match. That was. Uh, he was able to grind one out there, kind of the same way in the uh, in the quarterfinals with JJ Wilson from Cedar Cliff. Uh, you know, Louis Newell just keeps chugging along and you know winning matches. And the other semifinal was a doozy, and I, I thought that was uh, going to be – I circled and highlighted that match. Logan Macri versus Doug Zapp. Logan Macri, a uh, uh, returning Powerade finalist, uh, going against a guy who was a state champion last year, Doug Zapp from downtown West. I did not get to see that one. That one was underneath uh, the underneath uh, where I sit, so I couldn't get to see that one. Uh, how did that one go? It, it was – I mean, it was a close match. Um, they were they were pretty tight within um, – throughout all three periods. Periods, but Logan Macri did secure a takedown uh, in the first period, which was the the defining factor there. Um, but that was a big win, I thought, for Logan Macri, a guy who um, you know has done well at other tournaments such as the Powerade. Uh, but when it comes to the state tournament, he's sort of had some hiccups. So I think this is a good uh, you know judge for him to sort of see where he's at, especially going against Louis Newell, um, who's a two-time state runner-up. This, I mean, if if Logan Macri is able to come away with uh, a championship of power right here that's really sets him up nicely in the state is there some canon mac magic here in the uh in the gym that uh, uh look at it. i mean just ask his brother i mean you know dalton had some magic here uh, a few years ago actually several years ago now but um yeah there's there's something about this gym with a canon mac wrestler that just there's something always special about a certain wrestler from Cannon McMillan. Last year was Brandon Furman, right? You remember that? No, we do. The Furminator. The Furminator comes away with a pin uh, in the finals at heavyweight, and I don't know. Can Logan Macri knock off Louis Newell? Well, what's your prediction? You know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Louis Newell. I, I, I'm as much as it pains me because. It's going to be a tight match. All right. I probably would lean Newell, but just because you're going with Newell, I'll go Macri. Okay. That's fine. I'm, that's fair with you. Well, now this, this is where it really counts. This is why everyone's listening in. Because 126, probably the, the marquee matchup of the tournament, uh, possibly uh, the year here from, from Pennsylvania wrestlers, Gavin Teasdale and Bo Bartlett. This is going to be epic. Well, either way, it would have been epic. I mean, if uh, first off, we got—I think we got to go back to the semifinals. Uh, Gavin Teasdale cruises seventeen uh, to technical fall over Cole Roan from who's, Benton. Who's a, who's a state runner-up? Right, right, right. No slouch at all. Number two in state, right? So Gavin Teasdale firing on all cylinders. Yeah, but Bo Bartlett is also firing in all, firing in all cylinders. I would say, even though it was only a two nothing win for him in the semifinals over Sammy Hillegas. He, he, I mean, he dominated he, that match. He dominated. Unfortunately for 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 Sammy, I mean, he dominated that match from top position. You know, I was talking to Ryan Holmes from from Flow, and I said, "What do you think?" And he said, "Well, if Bartlett can ride tough on top against Teasdale. He's gonna be in trouble." Well, and and I think you go back to the second period in this one, where it was scoreless going to the second period. Bartlett chooses down. And for probably 30 seconds was just continuous motion. Move, move, Cause, move. Because Hillegas was really riding him tough. Tough, yeah. I mean, there were five, six Gramby rolls in there that Hillegas followed and stayed on and continued with him. But Bartlett just didn't give up. He just kept going and going and going until he got a reversal. It, it was it was nonstop action and motion from him. Um, I was very impressed with the way he wrestled. I, I thought maybe that it was, you know, what, what they, we saw them wrestle at the, the Super 32 as well. Um, and that was that was a tight match. I expected somewhat somewhat of the same. Yeah, and okay, moving on now. So so, what do you think, uh, Bartlett well, Teasdale? I don't know, man. This I mean, Bartlett already. He I mean, he already stopped one streak. I mean, Sammy Hillegas was a, an undefeated PIAA state champion, and he just gave him his first L. Now can he do it against a three time state champion who's undefeated? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean. 
I, I, you, there's no way. There's no way I'm, I'm betting against Gavin Tisa. Look, the guy's won over 130 matches consecutively in his high school career. Um, you know, this is this is a guy who who shows up. He lives for the spotlight. Gavin Tisa does. He loves wrestling here at Powerade. Um, he just continues to to get the job done, no matter what. Even though people are saying Bartlett's the the real deal, which he is, he, he is. But Gavin's, I don't know. What, who are you going to go with? You know, coming into it, I kept thinking, okay, Teasdale, you know, he struggled with Colton Camacho. Has he just kind of plateaued? You know, has he hit that peak and really not gotten a lot better? And then he comes out and looks like he did in the semifinals and just destroys Cole Roan. So all week I was thinking, you know, I'm taking whoever comes out. I'm, I'm picking the upset, going against, you know, going against Teasdale. Mm-hmm. But after that, I don't know, man. Did you, you've got Teasdale, who's putting up so many points, and then Bartlett, who didn't put up points. You know, he only got two, but he, as we said, he really controlled that match. And, and Sammy Hilligas can slow down a Mack truck. I mean, he, he he's <laughs> he's very. I mean, he's just the way he wrestles, and that's. And I said that, and we were talking with Mason Beckman. I said, you know, if he's a if he goes against Teasdale, he's going to slow him down. It's just a matter of can he generate any points off of it? Can he generate anything? And I, I don't know if that was. I don't know if he was able to do that. You know. Um, I can't go against Teasdale. I, there's just there's there's no way I can pick Bartlett in this match. Just in the fact that Teasdale's, I mean, he's been here before. He lives for the spotlight. I feel like the pressure's not on him. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is. This this is going to be the toughest match of his of his season, probably the rest of his high school career. Yeah, yeah. There's no I doubt about it. I, I think. I mean, we saw what he did to the the number two ranked wrestler in the state. He tech followed him. Um, and when we talked to Gavin earlier this week, he said, yeah, this is this is the toughest tournament uh, of his year. Now, you notice who was here in the semifinals. Coach yes. K- coach Kale Sanderson was here. So uh, his future head coach of Penn State, Kale Sanderson, was here watching um, his, his recruit, Gavin Tiza, wrestle. And I'll tell you what, Gavin, he, he turned it up in the semifinals. All right, you got me convinced. I'm going Teasdale. I'm, also. I mean, it's not about me convinced. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just, I'm just trying. <laughs> no, to... No, actually, he has me convinced. I, okay, yeah, I was gonna say I, I didn't go out there and, and win 17-2. He did, and he looked good doing it. So uh, I, I would assume that's probably gonna be the last match of the night. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, that uh, that's your your main event, I would think, uh, and I, I think everybody will stick around for that one. So at 132 pounds, not a whole lot of PA power here at 132 pounds. Uh, actually, no Pennsylvania wrestler is, is competing here. But there are Pennsylvania ties. Oh, no, no, there's there's Pennsylvania ties. You got Carson Manville from Wyoming Seminary who competes uh, at, at Wyoming Seminary. He's uh, from Minnesota. Remember his brother Mason Manville, uh, who's now at Penn State, and, and uh, Carson's unseated freshman. And this was this I scratched my head at this because it's like some freshmen get seated, some don't. That's a guy you, you probably should be given C to. Uh, yeah, he, he, he's he's pretty pretty damn, but damn tough. But it doesn't really matter seating with Carson Mandel. It, it, it really doesn't. And um, you know he's going to have his hands full here with Joey Silva uh, from Lake Highland Prep, who we've been able to see uh, several times this year. I, I got to see him out at Ironman, and um, yeah, Silva's Silva's a, he's the number one ranked kid in the nation for a reason. Um, and actually, we found out some tidbit about, about Joey Silva. This was interesting. So we talked to Joey. I, I actually cracked a joke to him about how it snowed outside and how, you know, it, it's you probably don't get that down in Florida. And he said, I'm from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I did not know that. Did not know that either. He, he was uh, grew up in a little bit. He spent some time uh, in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, uh, which is out in District 1 area, the southeast region. So um, and I said to him, I said, well, that, that would have been nice if you had stayed in Pennsylvania. He said, well, I may not have been wrestling. And he said, I probably would have played soccer instead. So, um, you know, good Noted hotbed of soccer that Pennsylvania is. <laughs> right, right. And, I mean, you look at Florida, and you're like, well, Florida, I can see you playing soccer and not wrestling as opposed to, to here in Pennsylvania. Wrestling's obviously one of the, the top well, sports here. But it worked out for him. Uh, great wrestler. Uh, he made great it back. future ahead of him. He made it back to Pennsylvania here. And he's going to have to get used to the snow because he's going to Ann Arbor <laughs> yes. next year. So, uh, and as he said, he said, I haven't been home for a month and a half, basically. He's pretty much been camping out he, in the Northeast anyway, between ex- Iron Man, Beast of the East, Powerade. Yeah, which is great. And so Joey Silva and Carson Manville, uh, a sneaky good match here. This well, is- interesting matchup, too, between the senior and the freshman. Mm-hmm. 
you know, both super, super talented kids. Everybody knows about him, but will that experience factor win out for Silva? Yeah, and that's that's really what it comes down to is is that Joey Silva has been in so many big matches before. But, so you know, so is Carson Manville in his young career. We saw him out at uh, Fargo, Eric, uh, you and I did. And, man, he's he's really composed for a young kid. He is, and... I, I, this one, I think i got to go with the experience. But, man, Carson Manville has a great future ahead of him and a great present. Yeah, and, and, right, exactly. And, uh, you know, this this is going to be a, a good one here. And, really, if we start at – so we may start with 132 and end with 126. Could you imagine that? The fireworks at the beginning. That's a, <laughs> a heck of a match to kick off the fi- uh, the Powerade Finals and then to end it with Gavin Teasdale and Bo Barlett. Does it get any better than that? Not, not in my book. If you know, plow out your your car and get to Cannon Mac if you can, because it's going to be worth it. Moving up to 138 pounds, uh, another matchup where it's kind of interesting. There's a little backstory to it. These two are going to be teammates together next year at Pitt. It certainly looks that way. Uh, Cole Matthews of Reynolds already signed his letter of intent. Uh, Jack Davis, I'm not sure why he hasn't signed the letter yet. He's committed to Pitt, but he hasn't signed the letter of intent yet, is my understanding. So, okay, definitely could be teammates though at, at Pitt um, next year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he was decked out in pit gear. Jack Davis, and then we just saw uh, Coach Gavin uh, here. Uh, yeah, and he he said, yeah, they're probably gonna be different weights. He's, you know, you got Jack is probably gonna be a 133 pounder. Cole is probably going to be a 141 pounder, so um, no issues there. But they're both at 138 right now, and, and here they are wrestling. Like I said, Jack's decked out in, in his pick gear. So whether that's signed on the dotted line or not, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to be heading out to, to Pittsburgh. But um, this was a, a really good – Jack Davis had a tough match with Jackson Henson from Waynesburg. He was able to uh, come away with a 4-3 victory, but Henson's tough on top. He was – I mean, he had the an arm – an arm bar, and he was riding it up the back hard, and, and Jack was just like, get this thing off of me. It hurts <laughs> bad, right? Um, it, w- it was, I mean, Henson was brutal with that on top, but um, he Jack was able, he kept himself composed, and he, you know, he was able to come away with a victory, a big-time victory. Cole Matthews also had a good win over Noah Levitt. His was really close, too. You look at the score, and you say 5-1. Uh, you know, he probably cruised there, but it was actually much closer than that. Uh, he was he was leading one nothing. I think into the third period yeah, there, uh, really couldn't get a whole lot going offensively, and then in the third period looked like he just flipped a switch and and started getting to his offense and was able to come away with the five one win. But Noah Levitt has really impressed me here. Uh, I, I think he's wrestled really well for Kiski and and really been a a, a bright spot in in a very good team. Yeah, I agree with you. That no Levitt match. I looked over and I saw it was one nothing. It was zero zero for a while, and then it was yeah, one nothing. Scoreless first, and then all of a sudden, yeah, uh, Matthews escaped in the in the second, and then was able to, as I say, put up some points there in the third with a couple of takedowns. So when you look at the the finals, you got two future teammates, and both of these guys were in the Powerade finals last year. Cole Matthews was able to come away with a win, uh, obviously. We all know who Cole Matthews is, a, a state champion from Reynolds, but he was a Powerade champion last year. Jack Davis, on the other hand, was a runner-up. He lost to Spencer Lee in the finals last year. Um, who, who do you got? Uh, can anyone outscramble Cole Matthews? No, no, I don't and, think they can. And Jack Davis is—I mean, he he gets into some scramble positions. I, I just now that Cole's been down because at 145 at Ironman, not good, not good. Now down at 138, looks really good. He looks like Cole Matthews that we know. So um, for me personally, I, I'm going with Cole um, just because he's he's been in those marathon matches like at last year at Powerade when he beat Josh Humphreys. He, it, it was a pretty crazy match. I, I expect a close match, but I yeah, think Cole, absolutely. definitely a tight match. There's going to be some points scored, I believe. And there'll be some flurries that you just blink at and say, did I just see that happen? Yeah, right. I, I agree with you, Eric. Moving up to 145 pounds, the top seed Frankie Gissen Danner, Danner, Frankie Gissen Danner. How's that sound? <laughs> Gissen Danner. Gissen Danner. Okay. Frankie, he returns back to the Powerade Finals. He's from Penfield, New York. He was in the finals last year, uh, and he lost to Jared Verkleeren from Hempfield, who's now at Penn State. That was a, that was a good match too. Um, but you look at. He got pushed here yeah. to get to the to, in the semifinals. He was up uh, kind of big on Colby Ho, but uh, Colby Ho really made a comeback there and and put 
Gissendaner to his back. He didn't end up getting any back points out of it, but it was 7-5 at that point. So it was it was pretty tight. He had to cut him. I think 8-5 was at the final. Uh, uh, but, yeah, really, uh, and, and Gissendaner was gassed at the end. Yeah, he had he, nothing he, left. And, and Hogue just kept on going and going and going. And, you know, it pains me to give him credit because he came over to our <laughs> table. He came, he came over to our booth at Powerade and said, those rankings are wrong. I beat the fourth ranked guy. I'm like, all right, come on. I didn't update him last night, buddy. He's moving up, though. He, you know, be I was talking up. to his dad, and, and I said, you know, just to, to jag him off a little bit, I may put him at like 25. <laughs> he said, yeah, that, you should. He said you should do that, but, you know, because he, he's the one who tweeted out, you know, I, thanks for for seating me, Powerade or something like that. And no, obviously he proved it that he deserves to be ranked. Yeah, good uh, and, wins this weekend, uh, beating Joe Chisco. Joe Chisco, yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, really pushing Gissendaner there. So, yeah, great tournament so far by Colby O. Yeah, I, I'm impressed with the way he's wrestled. I, I know some some other folks that I talked to that were watching said, yeah, they that he impressed them. And he just keeps on going and going. So that, that's going to be good. Um, you look at the, the other half, you got Luke Kemmer from Hempfield. So uh, this is a Penfield Hempfield rematch from, from last year, except it's a different Hempfield wrestler. You and a, another pit guy. And, and another pit guy. You got you got Luke Kemmer here uh, who came in, and he had a tough road to the finals. My gosh, he had to beat Ryan Vulak, who that's a number one versus number two in the state. That was in the quarters. That was in the quarters. That was in the quarters. But then in the semifinals, he had a tough guy from DePaul Catholic, New Jersey, Ricky Cabalinas. And Cabanillas? Go ahead. You just do that part. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think you should let that in there. No, it's I'm comedy. Not, I'm, I'm not. I'm editing this. Go ahead. Yeah, Kemmerer had a tough finals matchup against Rick, Ricky Cabanillas. All right, let's start again now. Yeah, Kemmerer had a really tough semifinals matchup, too. Ricky Cabanillas, the third seed from DePaul Catholic. Did that go to overtime? Yeah, it was 4-2 in sudden victory, and, and Luke let out a pre- pretty big uh, scream or yell after he, he came away with the takedown in the, the semifinals to, to clinch a, a spot in the finals. And uh, yeah, that's a big win for him. I mean, Luke, Luke, like I said, he had to grind his way to the finals. I mean, he's... He's bumped and bruised for sure, but he he's there, and um, it's going to be a tough match with with uh, Frankie. It's it's definitely, I don't know. I got to go. With, I'm probably going to go with Gitson Danner. Yeah, I would lean that way, but from what I saw in the in the semis, if Kemmer can keep pushing him for six minutes, you know he's got a chance. Yeah, I, I agree with you because we saw what Kobe Ho was able to do to him. If if he's able to to outlast him, so to speak. And, yeah, if he's and, able to get to that fifth minute with it being a, a tied or one point match, I, I think I, he could come away with a win. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Uh, moving up to 152 pounds, a guy who we talked about, Josh Humphreys from Parkersburg South, a guy who's been to the Powerade before, was a runner-up here last year, uh, losing to Cole Matthews now up to 152. And, man, he looks put together. I like the way he wrestles. And he just destroyed Trey uh, Kybe from Mifflin County, who's a freshman in, in the Powerade. And having a nice tournament before A that. great tournament. Uh, uh, just uh, one of the biggest surprises. Everyone always asks me, who, who surprised you so far? And, I, and Trey Kybe is one of the first names out of my mouth. But yeah, he just ran into a hammer in Josh yeah, Humphreys. Yeah, Humphreys is just brutal on top. L- l- listen to this uh, road to the finals. Fall in nine seconds. Nine seconds? Fall in 50 seconds. Wow. Tech fall in 339. Fall in 118. And tech fall all... Oh, Kybe did make him go to the third period, so yeah, yeah. by that standard, it was a pretty good match. I yeah, well, that was a, a heck of a heck of a performance for him. To, he, he's got to be pretty well rested. It sounds like then, right? <laughs> yeah, he's only rested about wrestling. ten minutes. In My the gosh, tournament. it's like Spencer Lee, like you know, the one year he came into the finals and wrestled like three minutes total. <laughs> so Josh Humphreys is on that plan. Uh, you look at at sort of the the matchup here, though, intriguing one because Justin McCoy. Looked phenomenal in the in the semifinals against Brock Godson. I've never. I, it looked like a, a switch turned on in him, and all of a sudden he turned into a monster because you know he's such a nice kid. Like <laughs> off the mat, you know, he's like he's got a nice smile. He's you know he's kind of just really not really reserved and just nice kid. And all of a sudden it's like a switch turns on and he just turns into an animal. I was thinking that yesterday. I was watching him uh, early and in one of an early round matches. And he did a throw-by that he just, I mean, it was so powerful. It was like the kid did an entire 360. And I was like, where does this come from? And he's vicious out there. And he also has been pretty dominant. A couple falls a minute, 23 seconds, 152 for Godson. And he did go six minutes, but uh, two more major decisions in the other matches. So he's been on fire as well. 
Uh, this one, this one's going to be an interesting one. I, I think so too. This is a clash of styles where it, it's, they're going to, there's going to be some blood time in this one. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to warn you right now. So they get the spray ready because there's going to be some blood time during this one. Justin McCoy, a state champion last year, um, didn't he? He's won, he's won a state championship, and never won a Powerade. Um, that's that's an interesting tidbit because we say how hard it is to win the Powerade. Um, Justin McCoy defeats Brock Godson. And, and really just dominated him from the top position. Like I said, it was just brutal with him. Uh, and that's a number two guy ranked in the state. So can he, I mean, can he, can he go the distance with Josh Humphreys? I think he can. I don't know that he can beat him. Uh, you know, that, that pains me to say, uh, I'm a, I know Justin really well. Uh, you know, I've, I've covered him for years, but I think you got to give the edge to Humphreys here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with McCoy. I, I, I'm gonna go with the real Making McCoy. Making me look bad. I, I I do. I'm gonna go with the real McCoy. I think he's the real deal. And after what I saw that he did to Brock Godson, I, I can't. I mean, like you said, the the power the power that he had um, to go to go into the finals with the momentum he has. I I really just. I have a feeling. I don't know. Just just a gut feeling. And I'm, I'm not biased towards Chestnut Ridge like you are, so I'm surprised you didn't go that route. Moving up to 160 pounds, another guy that really impressed me, um, and this was Zach Hartman from Bell Vernon. Zach Hartman, I, I'll tell you what, another switch that just flipped. I saw him wrestle so well that, I, I mean, I had to stand up and just – look and say, man, did that really just happen? I mean, he he dominated Garrett Nyhouse, who's a really good wrestler, really tough, but he outmatched him in all aspects of the, the, the match. He was tough. He was tough on top. He hit a Navy ride right to a, a half Nelson, got back points. I mean, that's what Garrett Nyhouse is supposed to do. That's, he is, that's the way he, Garrett wrestles. He just bullies people. And he got bullied. And, and that was Hartman's first time that he went six minutes this week in this tournament. He's had uh, pins in every other match. So he's really rolling into the finals. But he's got a really tall task ahead of him in one Carter Staraki. Yeah, this is this is one I, I've got circled and highlighted here. Uh, this is a number another number one versus number two uh, matchup in the state here with Carter Staraki returning state runner-up, uh, losing to... to Cameron Coy last year in the finals. Zach Hartman, he they both look put together well. I mean, Zach Hartman looks he looks jacked. He looks good. Starocki's six nothing uh, score. I think that one was a little misleading. His was it was a tough match for a lot of it uh, there in the, the semifinals with Eric Bilek of uh, Lake Highland Prep, Florida. But uh, you know, so he was kind of tested there, kind of pushed. Uh, and I, I still like him in the finals. Uh, Carter Staraki just, you know, we, we saw him in Fargo, and he just seems like he's really jumped level since last year. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and uh, I think that's, I think that match that he had in the semifinals, it was a little misleading because that was a lot tighter than the six nothing that you saw in the end of the scoreboard. But I, I think you're right. I gotta go with I gotta go with Carter just in the fact that uh, he's been impressive uh, ever since last year. Um, I thought he was impressive last year. He was impressive here last year. Um, but th- it, it's really this is as close as it gets for me. I mean, this is really tight. I, I would not be surprised if we're talking about Zach Hartman how he pulled the upset. And it wouldn't really be an upset because Zach Hartman's a really good wrestler. Yeah, and this one should be one that's really fun for, for Pennsylvania wrestling fans because two guys that should get out there and, and really scrap and, and see who comes out on top. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Another matchup we got coming up at 170, a guy named Kyle Homet who ranks number one in the state right now. He came away with a huge 4-3 win over Jason Montgomery. It was a comeback victory for him. He was down and was able to secure a takedown late to win 4-3 against the returning uh, state medalist. And, and for his zone, Kyle Hummett has never made a he's never made the podium at Hershey. I didn't get to see this one. So uh, so uh, Montgomery was leading and Hummett came back? Yeah, he came back in the third period and, and just held it out. He was just able to, to hit the – he hit a takedown and then just uh, was able to hold on and defeat Jason Montgomery. But this is another matchup. You look at, at Kyle Hammond and Jared McGill. I'm not surprised at all that they're meeting in this uh, in the finals. I thought this was a, a good seed here. You got uh, Hammond number one and, and McGill number two um, in in the seedings. But both these guys are highly highly regarded in their own right. So 
What, what do you think? Well, uh, I, this was interesting for me because even though it's another Chestnut Ridge guy, I hadn't really gotten to see uh, Jared McGill at all this year. I know you saw him at, uh, at King of the Mountain and came away impressed. And what I've seen here has been pretty impressive. He did struggle a little bit in the semifinals with Scott Joel from uh, uh, Bell Vernon, but uh, this was... Uh, I don't know. This one I'm, I'm kind of torn on. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one, too. I really, I mean, both of these guys bring a lot to the table. Um, and as you said, I really I didn't see a whole lot of the McGill-Joel match, but uh, did you did you see a... I did. Uh, it was seven kind of five back seems and forth. Tight. Seems yeah, tight. Yeah, it was. Uh, he was. I don't think he was ever trailing uh, McGill. He was He was up and then, you know, tied and then up and then tied. But uh, it, it, was a, it was a close match. Uh, man... Yeah, I'm probably going to lean Hamid here. Wow, that's two Chestnut Ridge guys. I know guys. they're going to they're boot me out of District Five for as this. they should. <laughs> you, you're not picking one of them. I mean, th- th- what kind of what kind it's of? It's motivation. I'm giving them motivation. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I, again, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go against you on this one. I'm gonna go with Jared McGill. Um, He's taking over my district, aren't just, you? Just because I saw him at King of the Mountain, and I, I was very impressed with the way he wrestled. Um, and Kyle Hammett, I mean, we sh- he has a gas tank. I mean, he has a gas tank that he the, – all those Waynesburg guys have gas tanks, actually. I think all of the Waynesburg wrestlers have really proved that, you know, hey, they're, they're no joke, that they were really wrestling tough. Um, but Kyle Hammett, he's not going to be – this is, he's never going to be out of the match. And if he can keep the pace with Jared McGill, I think he has a, a good chance. All right. If 126 is our highlight match of the day, 182 it might be number, like, 1A. Yeah, this is, this is you're going to put an asterisk next to this one. Like, um, yeah, hey, we should probably keep an eye on this matchup. Um, and it's not what we expected necessarily. When no, it I think, you know, a lot of people looked at this bracket and they said, oh, my gosh, you're going to have a Trent Hydley cody Mulligan rematch from the King of Mountain. Everyone was expecting, you know, Trent Hydley and Cody Mulligan to, again, be in the finals, right? That's what everyone said. This was going to be a rematch of the King of Mount finals. Not so fast. Not at all. One Tim Wallace had a little bit to say Ooh, about that. My gosh, Tim Wallace. I mean, and you're talking about this. He didn't just pull an upset. He, I mean, he won 10-1 over a returning state <laughs> champion. He won 10-1 over a returning state champion. Yeah, let that sink in. And a guy who... Uh, was a Powerade runner-up, only lost an ultimate tiebreaker last year to, to uh, Nino Bonacorsi. You're talking about just really impressive performance. That, that's got to be your uh, – that was my semifinal, uh, you know, power performance, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, Tim Wallace looked phenomenal, uh, w- was strong on his feet. And, you know, got the lead, and then uh, Mulligan tried to go big with him, and big mistake there as Wallace puts him on his back, gets the, the 10-1 victory, and really, I think, uh, kind of cemented uh, his getting his name out there a little bit. Because Albert Gallatin, not a school that gets a, a ton of attention. You know, he's, he's sort of the, the face of that uh, program, if you will, and definitely got some recognition for this one. They always got somebody tough, Albert Gallatin does. They, they, they're, they're sneaky good, I think. Lance Bryson, a guy who... You're I, right, I forgot about Lance him. Lance Bryson was a stud. My gosh, his arms are as, as big as my head. Uh, you know, he, he, he was a, a jacked guy, and he was tough. He went to West Virginia University. Uh, go Mountaineers. But you look at Tim Wallace. What, what was that? Nothing. Uh, you look at Tim Wallace and a guy who, you know, he's he's really tall. He's kind of lanky. But my gosh, can he scramble? I mean, he was in a position with Cody where he had he was on one leg. Cody had him dead to rights. And all of a sudden, he just kind of pushes into him and pulls him down with him. And they end up in a scramble situation. They, that scramble in the first period was just incredible. Let's bring in Tim Wallace, uh, Jeff, to, to talk to us about that match. And joining us now is Tim Walls from Albert Gallatin. Uh, you had a big win in the semifinals. Can you walk us through that that match with Cody Mulligan? What was your mindset going into that match? Uh, yeah, just to wrestle like like I know how. That's the uh, main thing. And the first period was just a bunch of scrambling, and I know like I'm really good. At, I can scramble really well, and not many people can like keep up. And that, that was like basically the whole first period. And uh, second period, I got. I was on top of him, and I turned him for a two count, and that gave me the lead. And then he escaped, I think, and I took him down. 
and maybe I may have been ending the period. I'm not sure. I can't really. You were you were you were able to get to your offense. Yeah. I mean, that first period was just wild scrambles. I mean, that was some high quality scrambles between you two. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, you know, that position. You were up. He had your leg up, it looking like he was trying to finish, and then all of a sudden, you fall into him. And yeah. you get you end up getting getting the takedown. Yeah, yeah what was I just, that like? I just kept him on his toes. Like whenever like he had my leg up in there, and I like I'm going down to pick his ankle or something. He his he almost like sprawled back because he was afraid I was on a funk, and then it kind of like got him off balance, and I kind of just like drove into him. And then Tim, uh, that third period there, he's obviously kind of desperate at that situation. He he went for the throw, and you were able to counter and put him on his back. Tell me about that. I mean, what, are you you nervous there in that situation, or you feel pretty comfortable? I feel really comfortable in that that like position. Uh, I've gotten that position so many times and won it a lot. Like uh, I have two two uh, overhooks, and like I do a little inside trip there, and we both land on our side, but I end up fighting on top. Yeah, and then you were able to come up uh, on top. You have to keep him on his back there, and a big 10-1 win. I know uh, Twitter was already reacting as soon as I, I posted that. There were you know, a lot of comments uh, just looking at it like, wow, 10-1. Uh, you know. are, are, you, are you looking forward to the finals? You get a rematch with Trent Hydley, a guy you wrestled last year here. That was a pretty wild match. I remember that one, yeah. right? What, what, what do you remember about that match from last year with Trent? Uh, you almost got a takedown, right? Yeah. I, in the third period, it was like 15 seconds left, and I was down by one. And I hit a super duck. Super and, duck, yeah. yeah. And it was like kind of controversial. He, uh, whether his he touched or not, yeah. whether there was control. Yeah. I remember the. I remember watching it on Flow Replay and stuff. So, yeah. do, do you take anything from that match last year that you can put into practice tonight? I mean, I know all I know. He's he's really good with a hook, a, uh, a hook and a knee pick, and. I mean, he hit that on me like three times last yeah. year, and I'm just going to go after him, it's just just like any other match. Nothing to lose. Do you feel like you? I was going to say, do you feel like you have anything to lose? You're already committed to Kent State. You know, you, you've done well before in the past here at Powerade. You know, what what is your mindset going into the finals? You just seem kind of like you're relaxing. Uh, I'm I'm just going to go after him, like 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 I did here in the semis. I'm not going like I won't stop. Uh, I'm just going to throw everything I got at him. You, you kind of have like a, a funky style. Like on top, you're so tall and lanky, you're able to get into some positions that normally people can't. Uh, are you going to try to use that to your advantage, the fact that, you know, you're so tough on top? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, talking about your senior year, last year you, you've been in a lot of controversial matches. Uh, Semifinals of States, right? That was a yeah. heck of a – that was a crazy match. You got your hand raised, I think, at one point, or they were going to – well, what happened was, like, he took me down, but he had locked hands. Oh, okay. And I kind of, like, I didn't know he, he locked yeah, his he hands, hands, and right. I kind of, like, lost it. And I was just, yeah, wasn't in the right mind. Yeah. And we went in overtime, and he took me down. You're about a second away from the state finals. Uh, yeah. Does that, do you sort of have a chip in your shoulder from that? Like, you want to prove that? Yeah, I want to, like, prove that, like, I'm tough enough to wrestle the best guys in the country. I mean, clearly, Cody Mulligan, top-ranked guy. He was, you know, high up in the, the national rankings. Um, is that something you, you worry about a lot? I mean, you're from Albert Gallatin. Smaller school, right? Um, do, do you you look at that and say, you know, hey, I want to get my name out there? Yeah, um, but it's, that's big. Like, I like flying under the radar and get my name out. Yeah. Tim, it seems like you've really improved from last year. Uh, how do you feel like, where do you feel like you've improved the most over the past year? Hmm. I, I'm on my feet. I feel like, I feel really confident on my feet and on top. I think on top I've gotten a lot better. I don't know. I think I improved like all positions, like bottom. No one really <laughs> You just really, you just got a lot better, right? <laughs> yeah. you just, did you do anything special over the summer or is it? I mean, I go to, I go to Young Guns and work out there. That's about it. I wrestle freestyle. Yeah, you seem like you would be decent at freestyle. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. Hey, uh, you know, we're looking for. What are you going to do between now and the finals? Relax. I'm probably going to hang out with my family. Hang out with your family. Relax a little bit. All right. Well, Tim, we're looking forward to seeing you in the finals at a rematch with, with Trent Hodley uh, from last year at Powerade. And we look forward to seeing you out there. And congratulations on a big win in the semifinals. All right. Thank you. Yep. 
Uh, again, appreciate Tim Wallace coming on and talking to us a little bit about his performance in the semifinals and what he expects to go in the finals. And, you know, if you don't remember that match from last year against Trent Hydley from the Power, you should probably go on Flow Wrestling and watch that match because it was a heck of a bout. And as Tim said, it was kind of controversial. It looked like he may have gotten a takedown. Um, and, and, you know, it's neither here or there, but it, it's it, this is a good match. So does he get it done this year? You know, I mean, again, Trent is a, is a guy who I just, I really, I'm, I'm never, I'm never disappointed with what what Trent does. Um, you know, with, with the way he wrestles, even the loss to Aaron Brooks. I mean, just the the way he bounced back from that and was able to get you know refocused. Uh, and we saw we saw what he, he was able to do and to refocus to get back to where he wanted to be. Um, it, it's gonna, he's going to have his hands full. This is going to be. I mean, this is a this is a really tight match. It is. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to lean Hydley, but man, Tim Wallace looks so good. I'm like 51, 49 <laughs> right now. I'm like 51 Hydley, 49 Wallace. Just and it's not simply because they were tight last year. It was what Tim Wallace was able to do to Cody Mulligan in the semifinals. That that's the scary part. Is you know I saw Trent defeat Cody Mulligan at King of Mountain. I, that's not. I'm not surprised necessarily that that Tim Wallace was able to beat him. I'm surprised at the way in which he dominated that match from all positions. Right, right. I get you. It uh, it, it was a very comprehensive win. Uh, very comprehensive. And I, I mean, I'm gonna lean towards Trent, but this is this is worth the price of admission for sure. Moving up to 195 pounds, a guy who we've seen here before. We actually had him on the show here last year. Uh, we may have jinxed him. I didn't even bother <laughs> asking him to come on this year because I'm sure he'd be like, no way. Uh, Gavin Hoffman, you remember last year, he wrestled, uh, beat state champion Cole Nye, and then wrestled uh, Jake Woodley from North Allegheny in the finals, losing to Jake Woodley. But Gavin Hoffman finds himself back in the Powerade finals. He's a two-time state champion. He's a world bronze medalist, and he's in the, the, the Powerade finals for the second year in a row. Uh, and he came away with a 3 nothing win over Austin Cooley from Wyoming Seminary. Kind of a tight bout. I don't know if you were able to watch it at all. No, I didn't get to see this one. But, yeah, 3 nothing sounds sounds pretty close. Yeah, it, it was – you know, he sl- he was able to slow down his pace. Uh, Gavin Hoffman has a pace that he just continues to go, and he never really slows down. Um, but you look at, at the guy he has in the finals, and that's Jake Thompson from Moeller, Ohio. Uh, he was able to handle Ryan Reyes from, from Clovis, West California, 9-3. So this sets up a, a kind of interesting match where you have the number one and number two seeds going at it. Um, what, what do you think here? It's it's so hard to go against Hoffman. I didn't get to unfortunately I didn't get to see Thompson either, so I, I kind of missed both of these. But just going on track record alone, I got to go with Gavin. But you look at the seating, and and I'll, hats off to to Powerade for getting the seatings you know as as accurate as possible. I think you had one Gavin Hoffman beating four Austin Cooley. You had two Jake Thompson beating three Ryan Reyes from Clovis. So clearly the the seeds worked out correctly. Um, but I, you're right. I can't I can't go against. Yeah, I can't go against Gavin Hoffman. Right? No, I, I mean, that's, I, it's just it's just not someone I'm going to bet against. Uh, do you agree with that? I would. I, I mean, I'm, not thinking that Thompson, Thompson is able to handle. I mean, I think Thompson's able to. I think he's going to do well uh, against Gavin. And and we know, hey, look, Gavin. He hasn't he hasn't won here in the finals. Is that is that kind of in the back of his mind? Like, my God, I can't end my career not with a, a power rate championship. Is that in the back of his mind? Or is it a motivating thing that you know really kind of pushes him on to, to strive to get that? So yeah, I think he's in a different mind. I, I don't even think he's worried about that right now. I think he's got bigger and better things to, to you know attain, to aspire, to, to uh, achieve. So I, I think you're right. I think Gavin Hoffman's going to be able to get it done. Moving up to 220 pounds, this is a guy I love to watch. <laughs> I think everyone in the, the the gym loves to watch, and that's that's Braxton Amos. From yeah, he, there's some entertainment value in a Braxton Amos match. He, he, there's something about him, man. He's young. He's a young kid, too. And he, he's, for those of you who don't know, he's from Parkersburg, uh, south in West Virginia. And he likes to throw a little bit. Oh, yeah, he does. I love the way he wrestles. <laughs> he's, he's good for wrestling, man. He's the way he wrestles. And, you know, I remember, do you remember, did, wasn't he the one in Fargo that did the the Matumbo and he went, you know, uh-uh, not when, <laughs> when, when someone shot in on yeah, him? Yeah, that's right. He, did, know, uh, I mean, he had to apologize for it later or did apologize dude's for funny. it Dude's funny. Dude's funny. He's, he's a funny guy, but guess what? He can wrestle, too. Yeah, he uh, he's pinned his way into the, uh, the finals. Uh, took out Dom DeLuca of Derry 
in the semifinals. Did you watch that match? He pinned him in 4 Yeah, four, he four. did. It was, it was close for a little while, and then he tossed him and eventually pinned him. So he did what Braxton Amos does. Yes, it was, it was a Braxton Amos match. <laughs> okay. Well, and Dom DeLuca, no slouch himself, uh, you know, obviously an accomplished wrestler in his own right, a, a state third-place finisher and number one in the state of Pennsylvania right now. Um, and Braxton Amos is going to have a familiar opponent, um, unfortunately, because Ian Edenfield was not able to come away with an upset victory here over Ben Golden from Lake Highland Prep. Yeah, uh, I got to see the end of this. This one actually went to uh, ultimate tie break. No, to, to regular tie okay, break. Okay, tie break. And it was an interesting decision because Edenfield uh, gave up an escape in in the the first half of it, and rather than or no, I'm sorry, he wrote him out. Uh, he got ridden out in the first half of the tie break. And rather than try to ride Golden at all, he just put him up to start the second half of the tie break, which okay. knowing that you hadn't gotten a takedown in seven minutes right, right, right. Is, is kind of a, a tough thing to go with. And, you know, he went for it, ended up giving up another takedown. So he lost 4-1, but it was ultimate tie break. So he, he really pushed him. Right. And Golden's, I mean, he's, he's really tough. They've wrestled three times now in three weeks, four weeks. Uh, they wrestled at the Ironman semifinal. They wrestled in the BC East, and they wrestled here at Powerade. So, so he's got to be tired of seeing him. I'm guessing that Ian Edenfield's going to be happy that that he's not going to see him anymore. Yeah, not at least not as long as Lake Highland Prep moves back down to Florida and goes back to. <laughs> they get a petition just to stay here. Well, I, I mean, they might as, they've established residency here. It seems like they're they've been here long <laughs> enough. Uh, no, but you look at, at this matchup, Braxton Amos and, and uh, Ben Golden, they've wrestled before. They wrestled in the, the Ironman Finals, and Amos was able to come away with the victory. Uh, if you saw Golden, he's I mean, he's put together. He looks yeah. like he could be a middle linebacker for an NFL team. <laughs> I mean, he's huge, and he's jacked. Uh, but Braxton Amos, he's got the Braxton Amos factor going in for him, so I'm, I'm picking Braxton. Yeah, that seems like the, the logical way to go. You, you saw uh, the, these two at Ironman? How did that? Uh... Yeah, it was, a t- it was kind of a tight match. Uh, I remember talking to Ian uh, about this, and, you know, he said, Golden, I mean, he's going to push him, you know, and he did, uh, but Braxton was able to come out. I forget what the exact score was. It, it was close, though. It was, it was a tight match, maybe a 3 1 match. So, um, you know, Braxton Amos, but he loves the spotlight. He, he's going to, we're going to see him do something entertaining. I have a feeling. <laughs> All right, moving up to heavyweight. Another guy who was in the uh, the Power 8 finals last year, Josiah Jones from Bishop McCourt. He, he's been in every finals there is. <laughs> he's He's been runner up to in every single tournament he's ever wrestled. You're going to give him a complex now, uh, just talking about, the, I mean, he's he's great. He gets he's, to there, he, and he, it's always close. It's not like oh, he's getting blown out. It's ultimate tiebreaker every yeah. time. <laughs> it's ultimate tiebreaker every single time that he, he's he's wrestling, you know. But you look at, at this match, uh, Josiah Jones and Quan uh, Debo. Jones beats Corey Dodson from Albert Gallatin, Tim Wallace's teammate. So you, you think Albert Gallatin doesn't have a wrestling team. They got Corey Dodson here too, brother. Okay, Corey Dodson. Uh, he gave Josiah Jones all he could handle, it looks like. He did. Uh, I know I, this one was sort of strange. I saw a little bit of it, and then uh, I got busy with something else. Uh, it, it honestly didn't feel that close because I know Jones got an early takedown, and he was close to another one. So he did seem like he was in control of it. And then when I saw the final, I was a little surprised that it was 4-3, that it was that close. Are, are you surprised to see Jones up at, at heavyweight so far this year? I thought the discussions that we had earlier uh, in the summer and, and throughout the season, I thought he'd be down to, to 220 by now. But maybe but he's he, feeling good there. And you well, know. Here's the thing. He plans on wrestling heavyweight in college. So yeah. why why not? You know, it's like Thomas Haynes. Thomas Haynes was 220. And then he's like, well, wait, I'm a college heavyweight wrestler. Why am I not wrestling heavyweight? Right. So, I mean, it makes sense to me that he wrestles heavyweight. He gets a feel for wrestling bigger boys. I mean, I think it makes sense. Well, and it worked uh, last year. You look at uh, uh, Toby Cahill from Berlin. Sure. Was, was sort of the same situation. He was a, a 220 guy and knew he was going to go heavyweight at Clarion and said, hey, I'm just going to bulk up, stay at heavyweight, and see what I can do there. And it ended with a state title for him. And Quan Debo from Erie Prep, the, the second uh, Erie Cathedral Prep guy in the finals here, joining Carter Starocki, uh, he's going to have his hands full with, with Jones. Um, and, and he had a, a pretty tight 
match here with Nathan Hoagland from Mount Lebanon, a guy who sort of came out of nowhere. Uh, I know you were interested in seeing him. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, and, I, and he pushed a bow. I mean, this was a, a sudden victory match. Yeah, 3-1 in an overtime, and I, I was impressed with the way that Hoagland uh, has competed so far in this, this tournament. And um, that's a, for a guy who doesn't have a whole lot of career wins and under his belt, he looks. I mean, he looks like he's he's wrestling tough for for him. Um, so you're probably going to go against Jones again <laughs> because I I, I got to go with him this time. You have to. He's got to he's got to come out with a win, get that elusive title here. And so you're so you're picking a guy from your region. You're the guy the, the guy. Now that, you, you get on me when I don't pick the guys from my region, and you get on me when well, I do I'm, pick well, the I'm guys. Well, I'm just surprised. I mean, the Ridge guys are going to. So you're you're picking Jones, but not McGill and and McCoy. Wow. Okay. Well, listen. I, you know, I'm going to join you there. I'm going to I'm going to pick Josiah Jones as well. But Quan Debo is is he looks bigger than Jones. He looks like he could be. He's more of a heavyweight. Yes. That's the, that's my concern for Jones is the fact that. The bow has been a heavyweight since he was fourteen years old. Yeah, you know I mean? so he's 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 been up at those heavier weights wrestling for for a long time now. So um, you know, I'm not. I, I'm just a little bit concerned as if Jones can. Uh, can. Can I say that I'm picking Jones as long as it doesn't go to ultimate tiebreaker? Oh sure, yeah. That's <laughs> well because he's. I don't. Has he ever won an ultimate tiebreaker <laughs> match? I don't think he has. Not I, that I've seen. I mean, no, no, non notably. That's for sure. I, I mean. Poor Jones. I, I kind of feel bad for him. Yeah, and he's a really nice kid. Super nice kid. Love the kid. He's a nice kid. And I, I do bust his chops a lot. But he, he's a good sport about it. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. So you, you're going with Jones. I'm going with Jones. Man, these finals are going to be they are going to be incredible. They are. Are you are you excited for I them? am ex- so excited. All right. Well, don't forget you can follow along all the action on PA Power Wrestling. Uh, you can follow us along on Twitter as well, at PA Power Wrestle on Twitter. We're going to have updates for you throughout the finals. We're going to be giving you some reactions. Um, you know, we're going to get some polls up there. Maybe get some polls. Win. Yeah, some pictures. We're, we're going to do it all, right? And, of course, we still have our booth out here at the – the Canon Mac High School, so you're able to come out here if you want to purchase a shirt or socks uh, or just hang out and just talk wrestling. That's fine, too. We, we do that a lot here, too. Um, so, But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Eric. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun finals. Uh, what excited you the most? Is it the Teasdale? Uh, yeah, Bartlett? yeah. That, I mean, if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rank it, Teasdale, Bartlett, uh, Hydley, and, and Wallace. And then I'm going to go Hartman and Starocki. Those three are, are sort of my tier of, of where I'm excited to see. And, and then I'll throw in Logan Macri and Lewis Newell. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that's a that's, lo- lot of ones to look yeah, for. Yeah, there's, I mean, they're all. And there's so much PA power in this finals. It's overwhelming. I mean, this is I, this is my favorite tournament of the year, for sure. I love this tournament. I, I just enjoy coming here. I enjoy watching the wrestling, and it's it's the best tournament there is, I think. Well, thanks for stopping in the PA Power Podcast, and thanks again to our, our guest, Tim Wallace, and, and congratulations on a big win by him. Uh, we look forward to seeing how he does in the finals, and as always, you can stay uh, on top of all your wrestling needs at PAPowerWrestling.com. Follow us on Twitter at PA Power Wrestle and friend us on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in.